and my brothers and my sisters. There might just be a person walking on the street, maybe even perhaps a person looking like a vagabond on the side of the road. You don't realize how close they might be to Allah. Speak with respect to everyone. You will never go wrong. Speak with dignity. There could be a non-Muslim. Speak with utmost respect. You never know what is going on in his heart or her heart at that particular moment. It could just be the final moment. I remember reading a story about a man who was a bus driver and a person walked in and intentionally gave him more. And it was a small amount. And this man wanted to accept Islam from a long time. And he said, the bus driver is a Muslim fellow. You know, he's bearded and so on. Let me test him. Let me see what these guys are all about. Now, it's wrong. Obviously, it's wrong because you've got to base religion on the scriptures, not on the people, because sometimes the people may not be following the scriptures. So now, as this bus driver is thinking, you know what, you know what? there's a small amount of change. Should I or shouldn't I? Should I or shouldn't I? He thought for a moment, maybe I should just leave it. It's okay, fine. I don't think he really minded because he just gave it to me and he carried on. Then he said, no, you know, subhanallah, he said, no. I will give it. So he, he actually gave the man the change and the man got hold of the change. And he said, Wallahi, you know what? He says, my decision to enter the fold of Islam for some strange reason was going to be connected to your reaction because you're a Muslim. And I just wanted to see what it's all about. And this man who's narrating the story says, Wallahi, I was going to sell my deen for 50 cents. I was going to sell this whole deen for 50 cents, small amount. Imagine. So learn to be honest. You never know. The moral of what I said is you never know what's going on around you at times. Just be kind, just be respectful. And inshallah, you will never go wrong. Even if a person hates on you, that's a new term that they use nowadays, isn't it? Haters. Even if a person hates on you, don't worry. You be respectful. You continue and you make sure that you are a person who's still kind. They must not affect your good qualities because they have a bad quality. No. You continue with your good quality. The minute you lose it, you now join their ranks and you might even do a better job in becoming bad. So you become worse. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So he tells his people, are you listening to this guy? They started laughing. Then he said to some of the Banu Israel, he says, Inna rasoolakum alladhi ursila ilaykum la majnoon. Now that's another step, another sign of arrogance. This man who has been sent, the messenger sent to you is a madman. He's a madman. Brothers and sisters, save ourselves from uttering accusations against people. Wallahi, it will come back to haunt us. Don't just call people bad names. We are Muslims. We are supposed to be having the cleanest tongue. Yet sometimes our tongues are filthier than those who don't believe because they have self-respect sometimes. Watch the tongue. Wallahi, it causes a disaster when you issue a word. It actually comes back to you because you will pay for what you've said. You have to pay. And you might think, no, it was light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about it. It was written. Be careful. Say a good word. What did it cost you? Zero, nothing. It didn't cost you even half the price of the mobile phone we spoke about at the beginning of the store. Nothing. It costed you zero. But no, we, we, we are too, I don't know the word. Only an Afrikaans terms come to, comes to my mind right now. But it's okay, we leave it. But that's, that's our behavior sometimes. We are stuck up, you know. That's it. We don't want to say a good word. Why not? Your expression break into a smile. It doesn't cost you a penny. Not a penny. It will help you, Wallahi. And say a good word or remain silent. So he says, this man is a mad man. Allahu Akbar. They said something similar to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember, they said he was astaghfirullah, magician. Then his, they said he was bewitched. Then they said he was mad, etc. He was after women. He was after power. He was after this. All those words, they paid for those words later on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May he strengthen us. May he protect us from uttering bad words about others. Because when you utter bad words about others, a day will come when others will utter bad words about you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never let that happen. Amen. So then he started threatening. You see, you start off one stage, then another stage. If it doesn't work, you go to the third stage. What's the third stage? Normally, a big guy will say, hey, I'll fix you. You know, I'll beat you up. I'll show you. Watch out. I'm coming for you. 
These are the type of words we hear the gangsters uttering people who want to threaten others. You know, they look that's what Firaun was doing to a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do you think the result of that type of statement was total destruction? Fir'aun was destroyed. So we are going to save ourselves from similar words like the Pharaoh so that we are not destroyed. Are you seeing how we've looked at it from that angle to say we need to save ourselves. So when we read the story, watch, ask yourself, do I use bad words to others? No matter who they are. If you do, be careful because here it is in the Quran. When the Pharaoh did it, he served a punishment. When we do it, the punishment will be proportionate. I mean, we're not Pharaohs at the end of the day, but the punishment is proportionate. It will come back to us in one way or another. Save yourself from that. Say the good words. Don't threaten people. So Fir'aun tells him verse number 29. He used to say, I'm the God, right? If you worship any other deity besides me, I'm going to jail you. Wow. Oh. He used to call himself a God. He knew he wasn't a God. But he used to call himself a god. So he says, if you're going to worship a deity besides me, I'm going to jail you, subhanallah. So Musa alayhi salam needed to reply to this because this is a big man. Musa alayhi salam knows what he can do, but he knows that Allah is even bigger. There is no one bigger than Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he knows he's a messenger. But Allah told him when Allah sent him to the Pharaoh, beautiful words. When Allah sent him to the Pharaoh, him and his brother, Harun and Musa, Moses and Aaron, may peace be upon them. Allah says, go to the Pharaoh, the two of you. And how should you speak? Listen to what Allah says. Go and tell him soft words. Perhaps he might be reminded or he might be fearful. He might understand or it might impact him if you speak with soft words. Now pause for a moment. My brothers and sisters, if you want to impact on anyone, anyone, especially when it comes to religion, you need to use the most beautiful words, the softest words, layinan, that which is very soft. My brother, I love you. We are all trying to go to Jannah and we will meet each other there. But let's make this journey easy by helping each other to tread the beautiful path towards paradise. Talk like that. You don't have to say, you, you don't read Salah, burning, you're burning. It's correct. Technically speaking, it may be a statement that's right. But encourage the brother, speak about the benefits of Salah, what you gained, how you feel. Wallahi, you, they will feel the need and the urge. Subhanallah, there is a way to talk. If Allah told the best of the time who was Moses, may peace be upon him, to go to the worst of the time who was the Pharaoh, and Allah told him to say soft words, I promise you, we can never be better than Moses and whoever we go to can never be worse than the Pharaoh. So we need to be even softer. You get the point? That's a powerful point. None of us can claim we're better than Musa alayhi salam. And we can never claim, you know, the uncle down the road, hey, he puts the Pharaoh to shame. No way, no way. The Pharaoh was worse. Allahu Akbar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us hidayah and guidance. So my beloved brothers and sisters, this man, Musa alayhi salam, helped by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, what if I've brought a sign? What if I have something? You, you are telling me not to worship a deity besides you or you will jail me. What if I've brought you a clear cut sign? So the Pharaoh says, He says, okay, bring it. Let's see if you are truthful. I want to see the sign. I want to see the sign. So you all know what happened. Uh, the, the Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam showed him two signs. The one was when he put his stick down and it became a serpent. And the other was when he showed his hand and, he, and it was very, very white, bright, shining with nur. And this was all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Pharaoh still, no, not good enough. This, my guys can do this. Typical answer. You come with the best product. And say, no, 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 no. Don't worry, I can do this. It's okay. Just walk. Respect people. My brothers and sisters, you never know what's coming. So listen to what happens here. He says to his people, You know what? 
we can bring all the magicians from the land bring them forth and we're going to face this man he's just a magician so they started calling him a magician so they brought all the magicians and the magicians came now something interesting happens when a person works for Allah who gives him the reward Allah when a person works for that which is besides Allah what does he expect a different type of a reward agree so yes when we work in our day-to-day -day lives we have a job we do the job dedicatedly bearing in mind that Allah has placed on our shoulders the responsibility of the fulfillment of the agreement between the employee and the employer we know that so we will work even if the employer is not watching we fear Allah so we work properly and we expect a reward for having fulfilled that part of the agreement one is from Allah because we were honest and two from the person we worked for because we achieved what was meant to be achieved through the contract whatever it was so it doesn't mean you're not allowed to take a salary but for us what is more important is the dignity and the respect subhanallah you work at someone's house or someone's place you work anywhere and your boss treats you like dirt you probably will hand in your resignation even if the salary was good subhanallah unless it was really really good you might think that you know what well he pays me for all these swear words it's fine but very few people would do that very few people would do that let's learn to respect those who work for us i mean